Good morning. I finally got some fog in the scenic rim. This is near where I was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just down the road actually. And I was heading back to the original spot. But I just drove past this little section here. And it was a great view looking back towards Mount Barney with the valleys are just converging and there's some trees and some fog. So I decided to just pull in here. It's really easy access pulling up the road. Nice and safe. So I can see some lone trees in the distance. So my intention with this video was to use the 100 400 lens. I picked up a Tamron 100 400 for like $500. So I'm going to try and use that a bit more um, alongside my 24 to 120. At the moment, 24 to 120 is doing the job. I'm going to try and frame up a scene. It's a bit tricky. I don't like the foreground, but I love the way the two valleys are just converging like this with the trees to the left, right, the mountain in the background. It's almost like the valley snakes through the scene, so yeah. I'm going to try to capture a couple of images. When it does come to shooting in fog or mist, it's best to keep it simple because fog can simplify the most chaotic of scenes, which is why woodland photographers not rely on it, but they love it so much. Fog just breaks down that chaos. So when you are shooting in mist or fog, pick out lone trees, shapes, patterns. They lend themselves really well. So like the patterns here in the valley, it's just flowing down to the right hand side. All them nice kind of minimalistic images suit fog really, really well. Okay, now I'm going to crack on the long lens. There's some dead lone trees out there that I can't get to with the 24 to 120, so it's time to find the 100. Struggling a small bit to get a sharp shot with the long lens. Um, this is the Tamron 100 400. I picked it up cheap. Why didn't I buy the Nikon 100-400? Well, because it costs about three times more. <laughs> so, yeah, it's I'm getting it now, but just have to mess around with the settings a bit and messing around with the stabilisation. Maybe I can program those stabilisation modes, but yeah, just picking out different subjects. The animals with the trees actually make really nice subjects. Uh, I'm only at f6.3, 1 over 1.25, and I'm just on auto ISO. I think it's an ISO 800 at the moment. And yeah, that bird frightened the show me. Okay, so now I'm going to wait for the light. And in about 10 minutes time, we should get some light darting through and hopefully get those beautiful light rays coming through the trees. I've got some woodland trees lined up here in front of me. And I hope to get some light darting through it. There it is. The light coming through here is just epic right now. And I've just got like a foggy scene lined up. Yeah, oh, that looks absolutely class. I got a bracket. Yeah, I have to bracket this one because it's just like a scene like this you can kind of go for that high key overexposed look you don't really need much detail in the shadows but oh, wow um, I still bracket just to be safe 
the light streaming through those trees right now is just absolutely epic. Okay, so I've swapped to the GoPro there because it was just too annoying and awkward to try and hold out a camera. Oh, that's epic. 6.3. The light shaft in through these, through these trees right now is just absolutely incredible. I love setting up the drone. I'd say the drone looks absolutely insane. But I just don't want to spend too much time faffing about with different things. I already spent, I already wasted 10 minutes there trying to organise my camera bag. I brought the wrong bag with me today. Too small. Especially when I had the long lens. Incredible, there's a tree out here catching some beautiful light. I think I'll need. I don't know where I can actually shoot it from, maybe down here. I will need a long lens for it though. Let's stroll down here a second. I haven't even gotten to where I wanted to go yet. <laughs> Which was, probably has a nice view as well, but This is where I was this morning and you can see now my image mean, is completely different landscape. It's amazing what a bit of light can do. There's a hut in here and I'd love to try capture it in amongst the trees. But I think I need a longer lens. Oh no, hang on. That works. I really don't need to bracket this. Oh, look at that. That's cool. That's pretty nice. Hmm. I might finally get to go to. Oh, in case you didn't notice. I'm using the Nisi Swift system. More details about that in another video, but so far very pleased. I went to that other area that I was meant to go to, and I'm glad I didn't this morning because there was no fog. Like, not one bit of fog. So, let's mosey down here. Because that tree that I spotted earlier on is in a much better position now. Oh, walking through long grass in Australia is never, never good. Okay. And those trees, those lone trees look very appealing as well, the dead ones. They start to remind me of those trees you see in Namibia. You know? Like, yeah, okay. Let's keep this simple. Like I said, keep it simple when it comes to fog. So we're going in on those trees. Oh yeah, definitely need a long lens here. Can't see if the sun, maybe I'll zoom out. Nah. There's no light hitting them though. And just like that, the light is gone. I had a bit of light on him, but it's gone now. What does that tree look like? Mm, meh. The last tree I caught last week looked better than that. So, the problem I don't like now about this composition is that there's no light. And because there's no light, so you know what, I'll, I'll try on the video and I'll show you what I mean. So, because there's no light, there's no difference in the valleys, which basically means there's no depth. So, I need to look out for the light. And it, it, will, it will come back. So I do like this composition. I think I, I'm probably gonna go in a bit tighter like this, sorry, 
Maybe something like that. On those dead trees. Okay, so I think we've got a bit of light on our scene now. With our Namibia trees, we'll call them. I actually don't like the mountain in the background, to be honest. Oh, that is, I, probably, I probably would crop even tighter in there. I'm at 400, but I'd probably crop even tighter. So I don't like the mountain in the background. It's a bit distracting. Have our light, so let's see what we can create now we have a bit of light. Okay, so pat back, pat, 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 pack. Popped back onto the nice camera. Popped back onto the nice camera. It's tough to say. Um, it's a funny one. I feel like I didn't capture anything unbelievable this morning. Um, but I captured a, a lot of nice photographs. And I suppose you have to remember that this this is all new regions to me so I'm still figuring out what I want to photograph and what I like to photograph here but this is definitely a bit of me mountains, valleys, fog and I think with the long lens I got a couple of nice shots there I definitely got some nice images probably my favourite would be the woodland one where I had the trees and the hut kind of in the background I think that looks pretty cool and that's a scene that I copped straight away this morning um, so yeah, that could be nice. And I probably ended up frantically darting, which I said not to do. Fairly certain I said not to do that. But when a place is new, I suppose by me taking a cup, a lot of different shots, I get a feel for the area. Amazing that the area I was actually gonna go this morning had no fog there. So I'm glad that I was actually a bit later this morning because if I had been earlier, this place would have been in darkness. I would have drove past it and I would have ended up in the other side of the valley where there was no fog. So because I was that bit later, I spotted all the fog in this valley. Um, I suppose I definitely benefited from having the 100 to 400 here today to pick out those longer scenes. Would I have missed it? No, probably not. I probably would have got away with 24 to 120. But, what an amazing place. I love picking out trees in the fog. Yeah, I'm looking forward to testing these a bit more thoroughly. But, I mean, I am an EC ambassador, so I'll probably take this for what it is. If you might think it's a bit biased. But, um, yeah, I do prefer the slide-on system like that than the square filter holder system. This is just a bit less cumbersome for me. You do have to firmly push it on and then taking it off can be a bit you can have to hold the lens while you're sliding it off but I'd rather have that than have it loose okay now I'm rambling I'll uh, let you go and hopefully you enjoy the images mm -hmm.